Today I am going into all the details about my DNC, which I had two months ago. I am now completely healed, everything is good. In my previous video, which will be tagged above, I explained everything that happened with my miscarriage. If you haven't already seen that, go ahead and check it out. I go into all the details about my miscarriage. And I chose to have a DNC. This video does include some TMI details, just a heads up. We're talking about miscarriage, DNC, that kind of stuff. It's hard to avoid talking about things that might be TMI to other people. So I'm making this video for anyone who is thinking about having a DNC or even if you're just wondering what that is. I'm just gonna talk about the procedure itself. I had my DNC a week after my miscarriage was confirmed. However, because my OBGYN is not a technical ultrasound clinic, I had to go to an outside clinic to get ultrasounds to confirm that my baby actually did stop growing and that there was no heartbeat. I actually avoided this appointment and learned later that I absolutely had to have this appointment or else they would not complete the procedure. I just didn't want to have to like go through that a third time when I already knew what was going on. So the lady called me into the back of the room. She shuts the door. She was like, oh my god, congratulations. Do you know what you're having? And I was just thinking like, oh my god, this is literally why I did not want to come here. And so I had to tell her, like, I was just like, oh, like, thank you, but my baby stopped growing. There's no heartbeat. But that's literally why I'm here. And I'm thinking, like, is it not in this this file she's holding in her hand? I, I have no idea. For some reason, she did not know. Um, I laid down, she did the ultrasound. It took about, like, 30 minutes. She was taking a ton of photos. My actual DNC was two days after and it was very early in the morning it was at the same location where I gave birth to my daughter but this was an outpatient um, clinic so you'd only be there for a few hours the day so like leading up to the procedure I was not nervous I wasn't worried at all but literally when we exited the freeway my nerves just took over like I was telling my husband we need to get there because I'm gonna throw up I was I was freaking out He's trying to calm me down, I'm trying to keep myself calm, but it was just kind of all hitting me at the same time. So because of the pandemic, I once again had to do it alone. Um, my husband was not even allowed to enter the building. He had to drive up to the side of the door and just drop me off right there. Went up to the front desk to sign in. By keeping everybody distant, they put printed out photos of celebrities on each chair that you could not sit. So that was pretty cute, because I was like, okay, like. You can go and pick whichever celebrity you want to sit next to and it was just cool to look around and it was a good distraction to see like who they had displayed on the chairs and they called me back i had to undress in a hospital gown a hair cap everything they hooked me up to the iv um i told them that i was super nervous when it comes to needles and they were really good at calming me down during the time of just sitting there and waiting it really started to hit me uh what was gonna happen and i got really emotional I text my husband and I told him, I'm really sad. So I took that time while I laid there to just feel however I felt and cry because I needed to cry. I was just, I, did, I told myself not to hold back. I told myself, now is your chance to be sad, cry all you want. But once this is done, you ha you have to move forward. And I'm not saying like, be 100% okay for the rest of my life but then the anesthesiologist came um, asked me a few questions we ended up just chatting about like oh she put lotion all over me oh my girl the nurse came and said she was gonna put this medicine through my IV and she said it's gonna relax you and I was just like okay and honestly all it did was make me feel like really like lightheaded and dizzy, didn't feel relaxed at all. So then they're pushing me to the back area where I was gonna have my procedure done. And the anesthesiologist said that the medication was going to feel hot. It did not feel hot. It felt like my hand was literally on fire. And I think it was because of the medication, I felt like I couldn't like really voice it. Or maybe I was just telling myself like, okay, like don't be a big baby about it. but my left hand literally felt like it was on fire and I, I remember saying like it's hot it's hot it's hot and he was like it's okay just imagine you're on a you're laying on the beach in cancun 
and I'm thinking, Cancun, my hand's literally on fire. And the last thing I remember was a nurse being like, I want to be in Cancun, and I, don't we all want to be in Cancun? Then the next thing I remember is waking up and feeling uh, like a tube was in my mouth. Like my mouth was being propped open by a tube, but I couldn't talk because of the tube. So I remember just kind of like making like a noise and I think I pointed to it and she was like, okay, hold on. And it took it out. It was like literally in the back of my mouth. And then I fell back to sleep. We're still kind of like in a daze from the medication. I remember a nurse coming back and she, she had me kind of roll over my side and she checked like the pad that I was laying on and realized that I was bleeding a lot more than I should have been. And she, she told me that I was. She said she was gonna call my doctor and I heard her on the phone. They gave me a shot of Pitocin in my thigh to slow down the bleeding. And because I was bleeding heavier than I should have been, I had to stay there an extra hour. So altogether, I think my procedure lasted about four to five hours. When I got home, the entire house was clean. He used that time to uh, clean up for me and I was like beyond thankful for that. That was super kind of him. I was a little bit sore, but the following day was when I was really sore, like right underneath my whole, like on like the lower part of my abdomen, underneath my belly button was super sore. The third day was when I was the most sore. It hurt even just to touch my whole uh, lower abdomen area. And honestly, I thought that I was gonna be like totally good the following day and that was not the case. Like I really did need like t two to three days to heal and feel better. I had bleeding for about a week and a half to two weeks and it was just like a normal period. It wasn't like, um, for, at least for me, it wasn't anything like super heavy or super crazy. It was just like a, like a normal period. I am glad that I decided to have a DNC and not wait or not take the pill. If you guys have any questions about my procedure, DNC in general, miscarriage in general, go ahead and put in the comments down below. I think that people need to talk about this kind of stuff. It, it is important. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You guys have been extremely supportive and I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you learned something from it. My biggest goal is to make everybody feel comfortable about these topics and for other women to know that they are not alone and it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be sad. There's people like me who are, who are here for you. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.